great. Well, thank you all so much for being here today. Um, I'm very excited to do this program. I've presented a couple versions of this before. Um, and please, if you have any questions, I would love to answer them. Um, I would encourage you to pop them in the chat or save them till the end. There is a slide for questions at the end. My name is Kate Engelbrecht. The program that we're doing today is called um, From Trash to Treasure, and it's about recycling, reusing, and upcycling. Uh, I would like to say that I am not an expert in this. My background is working in libraries. But as part of my work in libraries, I spend a lot of time researching projects and preparing things to be interactive programs that are presented to the public. So over the last year, I did a virtual program on Zoom that was upcycling project of the month. We got together on Zoom, we all had our materials and we attempted to <laughs> complete various upcycling projects, which was a lot of fun and sometimes entertaining. Um, our objectives for our class today, by the end of the class, um, you will know what can and can't be recycled in Mecklenburg County. This program is by Charlotte Mecklenburg Library. Recycling information varies greatly by city and county. So I would encourage you if you're in another um, place to check out what can and cannot be recycled in your area. What I'm gonna tell you today is specific to Mecklenburg County. We're also going to discuss the dis differences between recycling, reusing, and upcycling. And then I'm going to give you kind of a little show and tell of projects that I've done and also some things that I'd like to try next. And hopefully there's something there that will spark your interest and encourage you to try something. Okay, great. So first, a couple of definitions that cover what I'm talking about today. So when we're done with something, we put it in our trash can and our trash goes to usually something like a landfill or an incinerator. We also have recycling capabilities in most of our cities and towns. Recycling means converting the waste or the materials in an item into reusable material. So for example, a metal fork would be melted down and the metal would be made into something else. When we talk about reusing an item, we're talking about using it again or repurposing it for an extended use. So the example that I like to use for this one is an old t-shirt. Once it's holy and stained, I cut it up and I make cleaning rags out of it. So I'm taking it, I'm changing it just a little bit, repurposing it and then extending its use. And then the last one that we're gonna talk about today is upcycling. And that's really where my interest has been. And upcycling is the act of transforming or reusing something in a way that makes it better, better is not the best word, that makes it a product of higher value. So for example, taking that holy t-shirt and you know, stuffing it with corns or beans and putting decoration on it and then turning it into like a heat pad for the back of your neck. Okay, great. Okay, so this information changes regularly. Uh, this information is current from their website, but I did another program about recycling about a year ago and there are a few changes here. So you'll want to check and be sure that what you're following matches what's current for your location. So what currently can be recycled in Mecklenburg County, glass, cans, cartons, cardboard, paper. Um, the big one that's tricky for me is the plastic containers. See that in the upper left-hand corner? So the educator at the Mecklenburg County Recycling said that when you look at your plastic containers, it needs to be a container that is in jar shape. So for example, a, a plastic peanut butter container that kind of has a narrow profile, a, a tall cylinder-like profile, and then a lid at the top, that's a jar shape. But something like um, a clamshell box that takeout would come in, or um, the little, the, 
plastic cartons that like cherry tomatoes come in that have lids that pop off, those are not recyclable in Mecklenburg County. Um, okay, so if you'll go ahead and go to the next slide. So then here's a list of what can't be recycled and notice that they do have plastic food containers down there at the bottom. So this is really important information to know. And what I learned last year from Mecklenburg County was that we have a really big problem with wishful recycling. And wishful recycling means that, you know, you're finished with that plastic container and you look at it and you see the recycling triangle logo on the bottom. And you think, gosh, I'm going to I'm going to do the right thing and recycle this. But when you put it in the recycling bin, Mecklenburg County can't recycle that item. So what it does is it means that they have to spend money to remove it from their recycling stream. In some case, it jams their machinery and gums up their work and it costs our county money. So last year, and this number is current for March 2022, Last year, wishful recycling cost us $1.8 million. And I look at that number and I think we could really use that money somewhere else. <laughs> so, you know, what you can do is look at this list and only put what's on the other slide with the green circles into your recycling bin. Anything else, even if it has that recycling logo, put it in the trash. And I decree that you do not have to feel bad about it because we can't recycle it here. Don't worry about it. Now, things that you think could be reused that can't be recycled, those are good candidates for upcycling. And we're gonna look at that in just a minute. The other thing I wanna point out here is, so it says hoses and ropes. Those are particularly problematic because since they're long and they get wrapped around the equipment and jam, and then it breaks and they, it takes a really long time for them to fix it. Plastic bags are really bad about that too. And then the two at the top, the fuel and the batteries, if you haven't been by one of the full service recycling centers in Mecklenburg County, I would recommend a trip. They're really cool. Whenever I'm going, I put my kids in the car and let them like, as we drive through, they watch all the heavy machinery working. But basically it's set up where it's kind of like a farmer's market for your recycling. And there's little stands for different things and you can drop them off. And it's just kind of fun to go through and see what's there. My kids generally stay in the car. <laughs> okay, thanks. Okay, so we've talked about this a little bit, but I did put a whole slide in here. What can you do? So one of the things that we can do is buy less, buy secondhand, and use items as long as we can. Also be aware of the wishful recycling and only put what can actually be recycled into the bin. Yeah, and unless you know for sure, put it in the trash. And then when if you decide to upcycle, and it, it, sometimes it's not for everyone, don't stress about it. Just do the things that you enjoy. Don't feel pressure to do everything because that's not going to help. A lot of what I focus on is clothing because I'm a quilter and a sewer, and that's what I use for my work. So some of the things that I've learned about recycling clothing it's a lot more difficult than you think. And it's very difficult to find a company in the US that will actually commit to recycling the clothing. There's lots of companies that say, okay, give it to us cheaply and we might recycle it, but there's no guarantee. And for many municipalities, that's not, that's not good enough. Um, a couple of other things, when we talk about buying less, what you wanna look for when you're buying new clothes is good quality items that you can use for a long time. You wanna to try to get items that have kind of a timeless appeal or style and avoid the fast fashion trends because that's another big problem too that we'll talk about in a little bit. I also really try to select clothing with natural fibers or 100% of the same fiber because when you get the clothes that are a mixture of like three different types of things with different percentages, they can't separate out those fibers and that makes it almost impossible to recycle. And then the other thing to think, think about is wearing more of what you have. 
uh, the average American woman only wears about 20% of what's in their closet. And then I just also want to note that upcycle and reuse what you can. And don't forget that you can always donate items to ch local charities, or there's also lots of um, gifting groups on Facebook, Zero Waste Charlotte, uh, Buy Nothing New groups, where you can kind of set up swaps with other people who are interested in this. Okay, next slide. Okay, so this is kind of the show and tell section. I'm going to show you some things that I've done. These are a couple of quilts that I've made. Um, the two on either sides are made out of sweaters, 100% wool sweaters that I got mostly at Goodwill that had holes or various other problems. And I cut them up and made lap blankets with them. The one in the middle is actually made from men's dress shirts and I left the pockets intact. So you can pull this over your lap and then tuck your hands into the pockets of the shirt. Okay. Here's two more. These are very small in size. They take about five sweaters to make them, but since they're 100% wool, they're very, very warm when you put them across your lap. Okay. Here's some gift bags that I've done. Um, I did this last holiday season and then also this past holiday season. Both of these are made from old tablecloths that were being discarded actually from the main library. And I, we ended up with like 17 of them that nobody wanted. And um, you can see the fabrics are a little bit dated. I didn't think they would live a good life if they continued as tablecloths. So we cut them down and we kind of mass produced gift bags in three different standard sizes. I had a bunch of scrap ribbon. So everything is tied with the scrap ribbon. Um, and I did basically all of my holiday gifts in these bags. It was great. <laughs> okay. So this one was really fun and my kids really enjoyed this. We made little Christmas trees but they're made out of sweaters. So the sweaters are in the picture at the very bottom. I got different shades of green. And then I took these little stumps from a tree branch and put um, pencils or dowels in them. My kids decided what size square of sweater they wanted. They cut them up with some help from me. I showed them how to cut holes in the middle, and then they kind of laid out the color pattern that they wanted for their trees. And then they were in charge of putting all the little squares of sweater over um, the pencil or the dowel. And you can see that we made these nice little Christmas tree decorations um, that then we gave as gifts to their grandparents. And that was a lot of fun. <laughs> okay. A couple of other things. Um, denim is not the most comfortable fabric to sew with. I think I broke like three needles on this apron specifically, but I really love this because I was able to customize both the fit and where the pockets go. And it's been wonderful to have like all pockets for like my scissors and my, you know, my seam ripper and all the stuff that I need. The other thing that I do a lot of with my little scraps are these um, doll blankets and pillows. And that's easy and it just takes me like an hour or so to do that. Okay. Here's some clothing items that I've done. Um, these are all, all of the sweater items are 100% wool. I have a hard time buying warm clothes for my daughter. So what I've done is I've taken mostly adult sweaters and then kind of cut them down to be garments for her. So starting on the left, this used to be an adult sweater that I felted in the dryer and then tailored to her to fit her. The next one, her green pants that she's wearing, those are sleeves from an adult sweater. Um, and then she's got this little pink um, jumper that she's wearing. The little blue shawl is really nice. That used to be an adult sweater and I turned it into a shawl and added the little trim on it. And then lastly, we have one of her favorite dresses that she played so hard and she ripped holes in the side. So I've been adding pockets every time she puts a hole in it. It's got like three pockets now. Here's a couple of other things. 
Uh, most of the fabric that I work with is scrap. So we'll start on the right hand side here. This tan silk that you see here, this was originally curtains that came out of the main library. Um, nobody wanted them, they were going to be discarded. I took them home, totally ripped them apart, washed them, and then I've been using them as backing pieces for quilts that I've been working on. The quilt in the middle, so I think this is interesting. For this one, I wanted junk. So I went around my house and collected all the little bits of stuff that have just uh, collected. So we've got beads, I think little bits of dried Play-Doh, there's a hair barrette, there's a computer keyboard, everything went onto this quilt. And then the last picture over here on the left, since I do a lot of creative work, I've always wanted a design wall to showcase what I'm working on. So this is my design wall. It's 100% upcycled. What it is, it's an old piece of um, insulation that my dad was going to throw away. And then another piece of that same, those same curtains from the main library. And then it's just stapled onto the insulation and it's mounted on the wall so that as I work on things, I can lay them against it and it sticks. It's really nice. I'm happy with that. <laughs> okay. Okay. So now we're going to switch for just a minute and we're going to, I'm going to talk about how I got into upcycling. And I'll tell you that this is definitely a pandemic hobby for me. I think fairly early in 2020, I watched Marie Kondo's TV show. And so I started looking around my house and kind of downsizing and organizing. However, as I was going through my items and selecting things to discard, then I started wondering, well, what's going to happen to this box of t-shirts that I'm sending to Goodwill? At the same time, I was taking a college class on public speaking. So I made what happens to a t-shirt when we donate it one of my speech topics, and I researched that and did my speech on it. So I've got this book, Unraveled the Life and Death of a Garment, on the slide because that was one of my big sources that I used. If you're interested in learning more about this topic, I'd highly recommend this book. And then I just wanted to share a little bit. The other thing that I found very interesting from my research was how our clothing is made now. So typically, if you're buying something that's made out of cotton, like a t-shirt, the cotton is actually usually grown in Texas or Kansas or somewhere in the United States. Not always, but some of it is. And then once that cotton is grown and harvested, it's shipped overseas, usually to China and other places like that where they have big processing plants and then also weaving plants to make the cotton cloth. Once the cloth is made, it's shipped abroad again to another country where they will cut and assemble the garments. Sometimes that's Vietnam or Bangladesh. Um, oh, I skipped over dyeing. Dyeing can be really interesting. And then there's also setting. So another thing that you may want to know is that before you wear new clothes, you should always wash them because they've been through dyeing processes, fixing chemicals, and all kinds of other things, and they haven't been washed since this happened before they touch your skin. And then in our case, the clothes are usually put back on something like a, a container ship and shipped back to the United States for um, packaging, marketing, and then sending out into the retail market. So that's a huge global supply chain that is, that's how our clothing gets made. And that was really interesting to me. Okay, so if you'll go ahead and go to the next slide. So the other thing that was really interesting to me was what happens to our clothes when we're done with them. So it can be a little bit difficult to find information on this. And the reliable information that I could find was from 2018. The pandemic kind of disrupted all of the collection of these statistics. But basically, when you donate something to a charity shop like Goodwill, only about 35% of that is resold 
as retail in the U.S. market. Most of it is actually either sold to recyclers or shipped overseas. And in many cases, once it's shipped overseas, it just ends up in the landfill. It's not necessarily recycled. So from 2018, we have an EPA report that says the recycling rate for clothes and shoes was 13% which sounds pretty good until you hear that the same year, 9 million tons of clothes and shoes ended up in landfills. Some of it here, but most of it abroad. Just to give you a mental picture of what 9 million tons looks like, if you bailed all those clothes like you see in this picture and laid the bales end to end, it would start in Los Angeles, stretch across the Pacific Ocean, over Asia, and all the way to London. That's how much clothes we discarded in 2018. The other problem is that in 2018, we produced 12 million tons of new clothes. So this is kind of what we're talking about when we talk about the problem of fast fashion. We're producing and consuming 12 million tons of clothes a year, but we're also discarding 9 million tons. And that's every year. And that's a lot. Um, I did find an article from the Washington Post that calculated that the average American discards about 70 pounds of clothing a year. And it's based on that um, 9 million number, so, you know, average. But yeah, so just something to think about. Don't feel stressed by it, but just think about it. Okay, we talked about that, we talked about that. Okay, great, thank you. So once things go to Goodwill, they try to resell them. Um, if they can't, they bulk resell them. And we have a Goodwill outlet in Charlotte that does that to consumers. And they also work with some other organizations too. Things that don't sell there are bailed, like we saw in the last picture. And then they're typically shipped abroad. When they go abroad, sometimes they're sold to clothing recyclers. They're also sold to large discount markets in uh, like third world countries. But many of those items end up in landfills ab abroad. So I think this picture comes from a desert in Chile where they've just been dumping the unused clothes. So we see the problem here in the picture. The other thing to keep in mind is that sometimes they set these piles of clothes on fire and then it becomes a pollutant problem. Also giant piles of clothes um, degrading like this release chemicals into the soil and water, which is another problem for our environment. Okay, so if you'll go to the next one, great. So, you know, don't feel like you have to be super recyclers or super upcyclers here. Anything you can do to lessen that average 70 pounds of clothing per person, that's gonna help. So here's a couple of ideas for what I'm planning to try next with my upcycling activities. Um, there's lots of little ornament ideas, wreaths with fabric, and then the one in the uh, lower right hand corner is really interesting. These are the seams from blue jeans and they're weaving, weaving them together to make a placemat. I want to try that. Okay. And even though I broke my sewing machine needle several times, I really do like working with denim. So here's a couple of other ideas, a floor pillow or a poof, a doorstop, which I really need, uh, more bags, which I also really need. And then the placemat at the top is woven den denim um, strips or like little tiny rags. And then they've got a pocket from blue jeans, which I really like, okay. Okay, so here's something non-fabric. If you have kids in the house, you probably have lots of broken crayons around. So this is a project that I really enjoy. You can take broken crayons and melt them down on a pot on the stove. I recommend doing it as you see in the picture right here, a little saucepan of water and then a tin can and melt the crayons in the tin can so that you don't make a mess. I have a couple of old ice trays that I use for this and I just pour the melted crayons in, let it cool, and then it's new crayons for the kids to color with. The other thing that my kids really enjoy doing 
is making fire starters. We do a lot of camping. So even though my kids are six and nine, they do know a lot about fire safety, how to start a fire and how to put one out. So we use um, the paper egg cartons. We stuff the holes with dryer lint, and then we pour a little bit of melted wax over it. And either remains of candles or crayons work fine here. And then cut the little rounded sections apart. And those are your fire starters. Okay. This is one of the projects that we did at the library. Um, kids like books, but young kids also like to eat board books. So we end up with a lot of board books that are done with their life as a book and ready for something else. These can be recycled but they're colorful and they have pretty pictures. So I cut the pages apart and make these little um, cardboard storage boxes, which is great for keeping kids art supplies, scraps for my next project, anything like that. Okay. Okay, so this one was also really fun with kids. This is finger knitting. So you'll you would take a t-shirt that you're done with and cut it into strips. There's several tutorials for quick and easy ways to do this. Um, my older kid was able to do this with relatively little help from me. Once you have the strips, you'll pull it back and forth kind of in your hands and that um, shrinks it down and gives it the yarn-like look. It's kind of therapeutic. And then I like to roll mine into balls of yarn just because it was neat. And then there's um, video tutorials online where you can put the yarn around your fingers and then um, knit right across your the four fingers of your hand. It's really quick and easy. My kids had no trouble with it. And we ended up with these nice kind of long yarny pieces of knitting. Um, if you'll go ahead and go to the next slide. Okay, so there you go. You can see what we made. We made these two necklaces, and then I also made a little um, round rug that I wove on a hula hoop loom. I also tried braiding the t-shirt scraps, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and turn it into a, like a rope bowl. I just haven't finished that project yet. Okay. And then I've also done a couple of projects with glass jars. So we can recycle glass jars here in Mecklenburg County, but Union County cannot. So I had a couple of requests for projects that would do glass jars. I really like cut flowers. So we did a series of vases with this. On the left-hand side, these two, we used dishwasher safe Mod Podge, which is a type of sealing glue. And we put fall leaves on them and then also fabric scraps. Once you put a candle into these, then it will glow through the leaf or the fabric and it, it looks really nice. It does take about, I think, three or four coats of the Mod Podge to really make it dishwasher safe. Um, and I have ruined a pair of shoes with Mod Podge, so just be careful with that. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's fun. Okay, and then this slide is here again just so that you can see it and we can review. So again, don't feel like you need to become a super recycler and do absolutely everything. All, all we need is some people being lazy recyclers and that will make a difference. So what you can do, buy less, um, buy things that will last for a long time, buy things that you can um, recycle if they have 100% of the same fabric, buy secondhand, Recycle when you can, but don't be a wishful recycler. Upcycle if you want to and if you can. Um, if you upcycle and make more than you can use, you know, there's probably someone else who's interested in that, or you can try something like selling it or swapping it. Great. So thank you all for coming today, and that is the end of my presentation.